the goal of SB 288 is to ensure that uh, dreamers and other immigrants in California are able to fully participate uh, in our Democratic Party. Uh, we uh, are in a, a party uh, that has embraced our immigrant communities, has engaged our immigrant communities, uh, and our immigrant communities are already deeply involved uh, in the work of our party. But they cannot serve, uh, serve in leadership roles. And we know how important it is for communities not just to have other people speaking for them, but to be able to speak for themselves and to be able to lead. Uh, and uh, this issue, which is, uh, we know that the California Democratic Party has indicated uh, that later this year it will be taking up rule changes in terms of allowing uh, non-citizens to serve as delegates of the California Democratic Party. That is already uh, under discussion and in process, uh, and I believe it may be taken up at the e-board meeting uh, in August. Uh, and the California Democratic Party will th therefore uh, potentially be changing its own rules. Uh, in order uh, for that to apply at the county central committee level, um, a revision to the elections code is required because the election code currently um, requires that a person be registered to vote in order to serve on a county central committee. And this bill will um, allow central committees, if they choose, and does not force them to do it, but if they choose to allow non-citizens, uh, including DREAMers, to run for central committee or to be appointed uh, to serve. Uh, this issue um, is actually quite current uh, in San Francisco, where earlier this year, uh, the chair of the San Francisco Democratic County Central Committee, David Campos, uh, appointed Sarah Sousa, who is sitting uh, with me today, uh, who is a dreamer, uh, appointed her uh, to fill a vacancy uh, created by a resignation on the Central Committee. She is serving and doing a great job on our Central Committee. Uh, she cannot run for re-election. Uh, and, uh, and, and so we want to make sure that uh, immigrants who already play such a critical role in the Democratic Party are able to actually serve uh, and lead. Um, I understand that there are always sensitivities around these issues, but I also want to make clear that um, we already have situations where cities, um, are not San Francisco does it with respect to school board, uh, and there are other cities around the country that have done it. Cities around the country have authorized non-citizens who are residents of that city to vote in local elections. And they create systems where uh, uh, a non-citizen who is a resident can, by affidavit, um, confirm that they are a resident where they live, and they're therefore eligible uh, to vote. So it's not unprecedented to allow non-citizens to participate formally in our political process. And here, we're not even talking about a governmental entity. We're talking about the Democratic Party. And the question is, should the Democratic Party be able to make its own decision about whether or, whether, whether or not to allow immigrants to participate at this level? I think they should. I think we should give the party that flexibility. We are not forcing the party to do anything. 